have a very important announcement to make. This is good. Friend of Flowers is to my right, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to keep an old friend in a pop star waiting, but this is important. And this is good. Tonight's show, and I'll do this properly. Tonight's show is coming live from Maida Vale, and I can tell you the atmosphere is heating up. <laughs> That's what it says right there. Yeah. Awesome. We're expecting a clean one tonight, but just in case we accidentally get some colorful language, some of you might want to make alternative plans. But for the rest of you at home, turn it up for Brandon Flowers, live on Maida Vale. Maida Vale Vel on BBC Radio 1. <laughs> colorful language. I wouldn't expect that from you, mate. I'm pretty clean. That's what I figured. Clean machine. That's what I figured. How are you, man? Pretty good. Nice to see you. Let me take these off. What's going on, man? Nothing much. Yeah, you're looking fly. You're looking good. Thanks. Very dapper. Is that, West Coast? Is, is that bespoke? Oh, yes. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> when did you get back to the UK? When did you arrive? Uh, about four days ago. Oh, nice. So no excuse for jet lag then? No, I feel good. Good. How have the shows been going? I know you've done a few off the back of you know the new album and everything else, and then you started in Vegas. How was the first show? It was very surreal. It, you know, it was like going back in time, the, playing these, playing a bunch of songs that people don't know. Uh, I was kind of wondering what, oh, what I was doing there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But ultimately, it's a hometown crowd, so you, you know, you put yourself in a in a friendly environment from the start. And yeah, I know you're very hard on yourself when it comes to you're a perfectionist. That's part of the reason why you and your friends and the Killers have been so successful so quick. Is that your standards are high. How did you feel at the end of that first show? Really, I felt really proud of what we did. Good, great. There's a lot to talk about. You know, this new album, Flamingo, for many people, mostly the fans, came out of nowhere. You know, a lot of people really yeah. surprised to hear about it. Rumor was spreading for a bit, but, you know, you chose your moment to go through the website. We're going to get to all of that. But, um, you know, were you nervous? Were you nervous before the announcement was made and knowing that, you know, music was there? But Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, uh, I'm so accustomed to doing things a certain way now. And uh, so I think, you know, they say change is good and uh, I'm giving it a shot. Good for you, man. Well, we're going to talk about the making of the record, what went into it, and just kind of get a picture before you, you know, unveil a lot of songs for the first time to people listening tonight around the world. Cool. And there's a lot of them, man. I mean, I know that that's an obvious thing to say, but there's a lot of them. This is MIA. We were just talking a little bit about that, Brandon. You were asking, what's it like? You know, what's the album like? And I suppose in a way, when you're making music and you haven't stopped between the killers and, and now into your solo record, it must be hard to find time to immerse yourself in other people's music. It is. It's That's one of the things that, uh, that has really struck out, you know, just stood out to me since we started. Is like the, the amount of music that I don't listen to, I guess, anymore. Do you listen to music at all when you're making records as reference points, even older records or older songs? A lot's been made at various points throughout the killer's records of things like Springsteen and various things like that. I know that seems obvious, but do you listen to things? We always try. We always, we've actually, it's been conscious of, of not listening to things. We didn't want to be too derivative and even though we're very tagged with being very derivative. <laughs> we aren't sitting there with records and ripping things and you know yeah. we're, we're actually you know this is actually music that comes out of us but you know we obviously once you listen to something you absorb it and it's bound to come out somehow. What is the what is the major major priority when it comes to making a record for you? I mean some people say it's about making records for yourself but you have a big audience. I mean it's obviously about making timeless music but what is the one kind of thing that goes through your head at all times when you're in a studio? Uh, just don't embarrass myself. Still? <laughs> it's, uh, I just love, I love being in the studio, and that, that's where I, I really feel the time just flies by. I just love it. I could stay there forever. Yeah, but you can't. <laughs> this is why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> they drag you out even if you didn't want to go. <laughs> um, it, was it hard to, to, to let go of the solo record? I mean, was it, did you know when it was finished, Flamingo? I thought I, you know, we thought it was finished and Stuart went, you know, Stuart flew. This is Stuart flew Price, home. obviously. Stuart Price flew home, sorry. Uh, Daniel Lanois, uh, you know, went to go make a record with Neil Young. I mean, it was, we were done and then I wrote three more songs. And I had to do them. So that's, that's where Brandon O'Brien came into the picture. Nice. How'd you did find it. that? How'd you find working with him? For Ooh. people that don't know, I should just preface this because I'm a producer freak. Uh, you know, Brandon <laughs> O'Brien's worked with everyone from Pearl Jam right through to, you know, he's mixed some of the greats, you know, yep. Rage Against the Machine. How'd you find working with the three different producers? And, and can you hear the difference on the record? I can hear the difference, but I don't know. You know, for, for the most part, people that have heard it say that, that, that they think it's pretty cohesive for having three producers. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. You're just showing off, though. Three of the best producers in the world right now. You're like, whoa! I, you know, it's, I, 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 I'm a very... Rick Rubin I'm sitting not, at home wondering why his phone didn't ring. You know I'm that. Right? Very, I'm very... I was very aware that they, that they were doing this in hopes that, you know, they would get the next Killer Tracker. Yeah. <laughs> it was... A, <laughs> this was their audition? Is that what Yeah. <laughs> kind of what it was. <laughs> um, you know, you've been pretty vocal already about why this record has come about and that you wanted these songs to be on a Killer's record, right? And initially. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I just got the, my, I got this, uh, I had a, I guess I had a rush of songs, a rush of creativity came in, you know, the songs just kept coming. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't imagine, if I kept, if I keep writing songs and we take a year and a half or two years, it, it would, you know, I say, I wouldn't want one of them to come to the table with 40 songs. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can't imagine they'd want me to. That's one, that's one way of looking at it. It's a really sort of, that's a great way of looking at it, that you've got to get these songs out there and give everyone a chance to start the slate clean again yeah. when you're ready. But at the same time, like you say, you have this urge to make music. Um, it doesn't necessarily appeal to everybody after spending six, seven years on the road nonstop. Yeah. Was it a grown-up discussion? Was it, was it cool? Did yeah, you want everybody to was great. I think you know, a couple of them are actually really happy. Be, you know, it's, it's, it's solidifying that break. That I know Ronnie's want. happy. He's still got a, <laughs> got a chance to play on it. <laughs> yeah. Dave actually has a great guitar solo on one of the songs. Nice. Too. Nice. And did, did, was the vibe different in the studio, given that it wasn't a, a group, it was your solo record? Could you sit there and say to Dave, honestly, that solo was pants? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was, everybody was, uh, yeah, everybody's been real supportive. Yeah, of course. You're Brandon. You're a nice guy. You make amazing music. <laughs> Simple as that. Let's talk about The National. You know, you could put, put them in the same category. Um, super nice guys who make fantastic records and have had a great sort of few years now. Um, yeah. You've always been a fan of the band. Is it a new discovery? We've known about the band, and, uh, and, and, uh, but this, is, this new record, you know, the latest record is mm -hmm. fantastic, and I just decided to, to choose this one song. I'm glad you did. Right now it's the National. Thank Brandon Flowers for this, and we do. We're back with him after this. It's Radio 1 from Maida Studios. Yeah, it's just a fine, fine choice, Mr. Flowers. Fantastic. It's the National. Blood Buzz Ohio from their latest album. There's an incredible band. We're heading back out here for shows, and uh, you really should take the opportunity to go and see them live, because they, they were my highlight of Glastonbury this year. We got to they're great. Absolutely amazing. You must be really encouraged as an artist who, you know, we've spoken about this before, when the Killers first broke and you were very successful in the UK and in parts of Europe around the world, you know, you are like bands who followed you, Kings of Leon and some who didn't quite get there, the Strokes, you suffered with the idea of not being big at home, you know, and it not actually mm -hmm. happening. And eventually you got there. It must be really nice for you to look on what's happening in America right now. And we just talked about this off the air. You're really encouraged with bands like the National and Arcade Fire having success. Yeah, it's a great thing. That's, you know, it's a... Uh so the fact that it's getting played, I mean, it's getting played a lot, you know, over there. And um, it's getting played next to things that, you know, before it would have, you know, for the last, it seems like there's been a drought, I guess, over yeah. the last 15 years. That's yeah. great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the set list in front of me tonight, can you play the whole album start to finish if you need to? Yes, we could, but you we're could? not. You're not going to. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's an important point to make. But um, I was just wondering whether you'd rehearse it all. You could, you could, you could throw it down. Yeah, we could throw it down. The guys in the band are actually actually recorded. We're there for most of the recording. Oh, they so were. They, so they know the songs. Nice. What's <laughs> it, are these all kind of old friends of yours from around the way? A few people you met at the time? Or? Yeah, people that we've toured with over the years and p picked up along the way. Nice. It was important, I suppose, for someone like yourself moving away from a family environment to try and surround yourself with as much yeah. as possible. Yeah, it's very, uh, it's comforting, I guess. You know, a lot of people around the world who are listening right now, and they are online or, you know, in all sorts of different ways, will be listening to this, you know, around the world and will want to know how committed you are to taking Flamingo, you know, from pillar to post. Um, I'm going to, uh, you know, we, we've, got a, we've got a month. In Europe, scheduled. You've got, that, you've got that diplomatic look on your face. I've got a month in Europe scheduled, <laughs> and we have a month in America scheduled, and then I've got to uh, decide, you know, I need to have be as fresh as a daisy for the next Killers record. Wow, okay, that leads us nicely into that, uh, and I'm not going to miss that opportunity. Uh, have you got an ideal situation or timeline as to when you'd want to get back with the boys? Oh, uh, I think as soon as possible in 2011. Nice. Has this been a bit of a kick up the ass for them? <laughs> you know, I don't in a, know in a good way. We haven't, we haven't really talked about it. You know, in a way, you got to be if you're Dave. You know, you got to be stoked for you and, and happy for the solo, but really probably thinking, God damn, I wouldn't mind getting out there and playing some songs. Yeah, hopefully the, the itch will get going and we'll and we'll just all be better because of it. The itch has gotten going for you already because I see that there's a W Y W Y on the set list, which adds up to something if you're a Killers fan. Yeah, yeah. How many of these sort of Killers songs have you rehearsed, and was it always your intention? Uh, two. No, not, you know, I didn't know what we were going to do. I, didn't, I, knew I knew I didn't want to play them just like we played them. So we've got two different renditions, you know, one of uh, Losing Touch and one of When You Were Young. Mm, and nice. It's, a nice, it's, a, it's nice to rework the songs and go through that process. Did you, did you think twice about it, given that this is about Flamingo, about songs that you've written for this record? Um... Well, yeah, it's uh, it, in the beginning. I knew I, I liked the idea of it, just to give the f people that were coming something t to be familiar with. And you know, I'm a part of those songs too. There you go. 
There you go. It's true indeed. Now, we have some tour dates in front of us as well, which is good news for the UK. Now, many of these have already been announced, but there's a brand new one that's just been announced. So if you're listening out there uh, and, you know, you missed out on tickets for the October tour from Glasgow right through to Birmingham, 12th to the 18th, you'll know about those dates. But what you won't know is that on Tuesday the 19th, Brandon didn't know until about 20 <laughs> minutes ago, uh, that on Tuesday the 19th, you're going to be playing Brixton Academy as well. Yes. Happy about I love that. that place. <laughs> you do now. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's news for Brandon and news for fans. Uh, check it out. Go to brandonflowersmusic.com if you want to find out more details on that. All right, Echo and the Bunnymen. Yes. What a great band. Great band. Have you met Mac? Have you met the lead singer? I have met him. He's such a legend. <laughs> He's great. It's been, a, it's been, you know, when I was a kid growing up, I had f f four older sisters and a brother that was into this, you know, specific kind of music. So Pretty in Pink, the movie, was, was always around my house. It was either, you know, in the VCR or the case was on the floor yeah. or, you know and so it, you know this song bring on the dancing horses was on the soundtrack and it's just always i've always been there and i love it yeah here's a band that changed my life too and it's nice to be able to end our interview on this man we can't wait to see you up here with your friends in the band thanks for making your way to made of val brandon flowers thank you very me. much man echoing the bunnyman